how to read Music in Color. The musical notes of Music in Color are written in colored numbers. When you read a number, all you have to do is play the fret number and the color of the string. Every song is divided into fractions called measures. A measure is a unit of time in music representing a regular grouping of beats. In Music in Color, we represent each measure with a geometric figure, the more common ones being a square and a triangle. A measure is divided by each side of the figure, and each side represents a beat. The square has four beats per measure, and the triangle has three beats per measure. In the following examples, we'll play a few notes to show you how to play a measure and follow the beats correctly. Let's try playing three measures of four beats. Now, let's play three measures of three beats. In written music, there are notes and rests. Here we show you the symbol for a rest, which is represented by an asterisk or a star. In the first example, we play the note one red on the first beat. On beats two, three, and four, we have rests, which means we don't play anything during these beats. In this next example, we play the note one red on the first beat, a rest on the second beat, one red on the third beat, and a rest on the fourth beat. Here we can see how each beat or side can be divided into two or more parts. And in this way, we can create different values for each note. On this measure, we divide each beat or side in two parts, so you can play two notes for each beat. The beats are divided with lines. Let's see an example. We can also have notes that are longer than a single beat. Here you can see how we connect the same note going from beat to beat with a curved line. Let's see some examples. In this example, we play the note one blue over the first three beats and a rest on the fourth. In this other example, we'll play the five green over the first two beats and a rest on beats three and four. When two or more notes are on the same beat or side without a line to divide them, play them at the same time. In the following measure, we play the notes one red and three orange on the first beat, three red and five orange on the second beat, and on beats three and four, we have a rest. The notes on the outside of the figures will be used for the melody or harmony. Inside the geometric figures, 
we find the symbols for strumming either up or down. Read the measures starting at the top of the figure and follow the notes counterclockwise. As you're starting out, we recommend playing the first four measures or figures and then memorize the song little by little. Try learning a whole song by memorizing four measures at a time. You will gain dexterity with your fingers and become better acquainted with your guitar. Inside the book, you will see that beside every song title is the author name or names. There's also information about the song, such as the time signature, which is used to specify how many beats are in each measure and which note value constitutes one beat. We also show you in what key the song is written. In this example, it is D, or number two, Re. The CD included with the book is for your own use if you wish to hear what some of the songs sound like. Songs included in the CD are indicated in the book with a picture of a CD and a number which is the same as the CD track number. Once you listen to the CD, you will also be able to compare your own playing. Let's try playing the melody to Old MacDonald. On the first measure, we play the green and yellow string with the number zero. This means you play the string without pressing down on it. Let's see an example. On the second measure, play the note two green on the first beat. Then on the second beat, play the note two green again. On the third and fourth beats, play the note for zero. Then. On the fourth measure, on beats two and three, we play three notes at the same time. Let's see an example. Now, let's try playing all eight measures of this song's melody. On page 24 of the book, we show you the symbols used for chords with the use of a diagram. The star represents a rest or a silence, meaning you don't play a note. The circles represent open strings. We also show you all the frets and the colors of the strings. The lowercase letters show you which finger to use for each note. We also show you the tone of the chord, in this case, C or Do. For the chords, we also show you if you should strum the string with a downward or upward motion of your right hand. Starting on page 123, we show you all the chords. In some songs in the book, we show you information such as the name of the chord represented by capital letters. And we show you the music and color annotation. For example, Ray seventh or D seventh. In some songs like Oh My Darling Clementine, the melody begins on the third beat of the first measure and the harmony begins on the first beat of the second measure. You can listen to the CD to better understand this example. Starting on page 77, we include some classical songs. We show you the recommended way to play the strings by using the thumb for the green, blue, and purple strings, and the first three strings with your other fingers. 
You can use the same technique with other songs or rhythms. Let's see an example with the first two measures of Andante on page 85. From page 92 to 113, we show you examples of rhythmic patterns, which are also included in the CD. For practice, you can also use with these a combination of chords like the chord of La or A on page 137. Let's play the first example of ballad rhythm with a combination of chords La or A. Starting on page 114, you will see some examples for scales and what finger to use to play these. We recommend practicing these scales to gain dexterity with your fingers and to become better acquainted with correct finger positioning. An example of the first two measures of the Do or C major scale. On page 135, we show you some combinations of chords. Let's see again the combination of three chords of La or A. Now, a combination of four chords on page 141. Let's see an example with C or Do. Many songs are written in combinations of three or four chords. Now an example of transition chords. See how you press down on all the strings with your index finger. The capo is a device used for shortening the strings and in this way, raising the pitch of your guitar. Here we show you how to do this. Place the capo over the second fret. Now, by playing the combination of chords for law or A, you are now playing the combination of chords for T or B. Between pages 169 and 172, we show you the symbols and terminology used for music and color. Most of these are the same for the standard notation. Let's see some examples for some of the more common symbols used for guitar and how to execute these. Hammer on is represented by an H. Hammer on is when a note is sounded and while it is still ringing, a left hand finger is used to quickly press down a fret that is on the same string. Slide. This indicates sliding your left hand fingers up or down the fretboard to raise or lower the pitch of the note. Pull off. This is the opposite of hammer on. Play a note and then release the left hand finger holding the string so that you get a lower note. Vibrato, represented by a V. Vibrato is a rapid slight variation in pitch caused by shaking your finger to vibrate the string. Bend. 
Here, you physically push or pull a string of your guitar with your fingers, causing the string to bend. This raises the pitch of the note by a half note or a full note. Other symbols include the repetition bar. The first time you reach this bar in a song, you either return to the beginning of the song or to any prior repetition bars that have occurred in the song. We'll show you how these work in the song La Bamba. After playing the first eight measures of the song, go back to the fifth measure. Continue playing to the end of the song, then go back to the twelfth measure again and play to the end of the song for a second time. Thank you for your time, and we wish you many years of enjoyment playing the guitar. <laughs>